Hello, welcome to this lesson. In the Chemistry Tutor, we're going to talk in this lesson about what we call the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Now in truth, from the very first lesson in this batch of lessons here in gases, I've actually taught you quite a bit about kinetic theory already. Uh, we've talked about what molecules are, we've talked about what pressure is, roughly what temperature is, um, but in the beginning you kind of just talk in general terms about what those things are and then we move quickly into the gas laws, Charles's law, Boyle's law, ideal gas law, and things like that. Now that we've done all of that, and we've done some stoichiometry and we've done partial pressures, we need to circle back and we need to come to a little more detail about the kinetic molecular theory that we mentioned briefly in the beginning. So everything that we've covered, that we're going to cover here, uh, has been touched on in the past, but we're just going to go a little bit more detail. Now, one more thing I want to warn you before we get too deep into this is that even what I'm going to teach you here today really is not the full glory of kinetic theory because really the math required to prove kinetic theory, it actually goes beyond the scope of a chemistry course. You know, it goes into statistical mechanics and other, other higher level math because when you think about it, what you're trying to do is describe how this gas is behaving at a molecular level. And since there's billions and billions and billions of molecules in any gas of any size that we would have in a room, then it's impossible to really keep track of everybody's, you know, every molecule's position, velocity, and how the gas is behaving. So really, when you dive into the math behind kinetic theory deeper than what we're going to go to here, you end up dealing with a lot of statistics because you've got too many particles to keep track of. So you, you start looking at statistically how will they behave. Okay, and that gets into to some other uh, uh, physics and chemistry that are just beyond the scope of what we have here. So I want you to keep in mind the purpose of this section. It's not to teach you every single step along the way of how to derive this kinetic theory, okay, and the, and the equations that come out of it. That's not the point, because to actually do that down at the level of that math, it's beyond the scope of this chemistry course. But what I do want you to understand is the concepts behind kinetic theory and fundamentally what it represents. And also, we're going to show some equations and we'll have some, some interesting equations at the end and we'll show most of the steps to get there, but mostly I want you to look at the conclusions and the, and the equations that come out and have a general idea about where they come from and most certainly understand how to use them. And so in this lesson, it'll just be theory. In the next lesson, we'll do some problems and we'll kind of talk a little bit more about what kinetic theory is. So first I have six bullet points I want to read to you. I don't want to write them on the board. I've talked mo about most of these already, but I want to kind of frame everything in terms of putting all this to you right now in one place. The first thing, and this is the kind of stuff you'll probably read in your book, you know, as far as the introduction to what kinetic theory is. Gases are a collection of molecules whose volumes are small compared with the volume that the gas occupies. All that means is that a sphere of gas or a collection of gas molecules is basically such that the molecules, the size of these little bitty invisible things is much, 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 much smaller than the volume that the gas occupies. So when we talk about gas theory, right, we're talking about zooming out from those molecules and looking at billions and billions of them and how they all behave together. And the size of those molecules are really, really small. That's all this means, okay? Number two, molecules of a gas are in continual rapid motion. They're never motionless, except at absolute zero, you know, zero Kelvin, okay? But whenever at room temperature or any other temperature, they're always moving. They're always zooming around doing something. If you could see all of the molecules in front of you right now, you would see billions of them flying around all different directions, and they would be hitting each other and, and bouncing off of things, and it would be very chaotic, but they're incredibly tiny, so we can't see them with our naked eye. Number three, molecules 